this is the area we're going to want to watch here over the next few days for the potential for a severe weather outbreak. That's what we're going to cover in this episode of State of the Weather Address. We're also going to talk about this powerful low pressure system right here that could blitz across the Midwestern and Ohio Valley region as well. Now remember what I said last week in my long range forecast for the next two weeks that you would see this area light up like a Christmas tree. That's beginning to happen here. We had a storm system earlier this week go across there. We had that nor'easter. This thing that could potentially happen early next week, Monday and Tuesday. And some more storms in the mix for this area as well. So it's really starting to become active here uh, in this region. Now, that's going to be very interesting for winter. Because if this pattern can cycle back in the winter, this could be a lot colder. Now, see this line right here? This is the 540 line. This measures the average temperature in the atmosphere being about 32 degrees. That's kind of what that means, essentially, in uh, layman's terms. Here's our low pressure right here. This is our precip shield right here. And it's just not quite hit that 540 line yet. They just haven't quite hit it. So if this was a month later, this 540 line, you know, on average, probably would be somewhere like this you know, a month or two later. And this thing would be all snow. It would be a blizzard. Okay, so... You know, as these things cycle back, we could be uh, dealing with uh, some winter storms. It'll be very interesting to watch. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode, episode two, State of the Weather Address. Now, comment below where you're from. I'm going to be creating a member map, tallying up where all the members are from per state. We're going to color code it. I'm going to put it up on the channel. This kind of helps me uh, just kind of see where everyone's from. We can make content for, uh, you know, the really populated areas and stuff like that. So... Let's look at the medium range forecast. That's what this uh, episode is going to be about. That long range forecast that I made last week is doing pretty well. It goes to the ninth. I'm, I'm not going to change it. It looks pretty good. So we're going to look at my forecast. This is severe, the severe weather threat for uh, the uh, the fifth through the seventh. That's what we're going to look at first here. And I'm thinking a slight to moderate chance that you're going to see severe weather in that yellow area right there, uh, particularly Monday, Monday night into Tuesday. This orange area has got the greatest threat. That's a medium to high chance of severe weather. And uh, could actually even maybe extend this a little bit further west with the latest model runs. But that's got a pretty good shot. You're going to see this area just kind of light up with severe weather reports. Um, you know, like uh, probably pretty good. So, um, you know, not good obviously, but pretty big. So this is the tornometer index. This is something I created and just develops a powerful index that uh, measures the tornado potential. Now, this goes from a 1 to a 5, and it measures the chance of tornadoes within a 50-mile radius of you. So if you have a tornado within a 50-mile radius, well, that would count as a hit. And so a 1 out of 5 would mean a 1 out of 5 chance that you would see a tornado within 50 miles, or there'd be a tornado within 50 miles. A 5 out of 5 would be, you know, 100% chance. And so I'm thinking a 1 out of 5 out here, so kind of a slight chance. There'll probably be a couple scattered tornado reports in here, but overall, less likely. Now, the 2 out of 5 right here is a slight to moderate chance, and the 3 out of 5 is, a, you know, moderate chance uh, for that to happen. I decided to, you know, and I think that 3 out of 5 is going to be mostly Monday night uh, down in that region. I decided to make this because, uh, you know, there's really nothing that goes this far out. There hasn't been a lot of talk on tornadoes yet. I actually have looked at the data, and I think there is some potential, especially in this region right here. And uh, so I decided to make this thing so we can, you know, just kind of look at it. It kind of sums things up. You know, there's obviously a lot more that goes into it, but this just kind of makes it nice and visual, sums it up goes farther in advance. Now, I know there's that Torcon thing, but that only they only usually do it for a specific city. So this is a way to put it on a map. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, this is the severe weather probe segment. This is, we're going to look at the uh, jet stream. We're going to look at the surface analysis, the instability, the ingredients that could come together here. And uh, I'm also going to look at the uh, rainfall. First, we're going to look at the general pattern here that's setting up. This is our 500 millibar height anomalies. This, this big long wave trough that's kind of going to meander across the central United States, that's going to deliver a lot of these little small short waves. And these little short waves are what's going to be driving this uh, these little storm systems that go across 
the east half of the United States. These will begin to kind of dig out in this region and uh, really kick out into the uh, Midwest and deliver uh, storm systems and cold air that gets dragged behind it. The blues and stuff are cold. The reds are warm. Now your severe weather is going to be out ahead of these things, typically. So we'll fast forward this into the future as we head towards uh, Sunday here. This is Sunday. There's a little wave that goes through, but that's not going to be the main show. Monday is going to be the main show. And you can see another one develops. This is where it's going to be the best, I think. And that's Tuesday right there. So that's going to be uh, you know, the, the severe weather. And your severe weather is going to be out ahead of it. You're going to have a low pressure system somewhere between the ridge and the trough. You know, the, anyway, so you're going to have a little low, low pressure system out there somewhere. And we'll see that in a second. And then as we go towards uh, Tuesday, there you go. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this thing uh, really starts to kick out on Friday. Uh, and then you got another one out here, actually. But this is going to drag some, some seriously cold air out behind it, some winter-like temperatures. Now, how far east this goes isn't in question, but it very well could get to the eastern seaboard. But lots of cold air for the central U.S., maybe even highs in the 30s or even colder. So 20s for the northern U.S., so it'll be very interesting to watch. But uh, that's what the general pattern is going to look like. Now, with severe weather, we need a wind shear. And this is looking at the 500 millibar heights. If you have about 40 knots or above, uh, you know, that's sufficient usually for tornadoes. And uh, we have you know, 40 to 70 knots here. Plenty of wind shear. Your divergence is going to be out in this area. For your lift, you're going to see some severe weather there. And you got lots of wind shear to work with here. Now, the concern, though, is the instability. We'll look at that in a second. Um, and this is a CAPE. It's called Convective Available Potential Energy. This is essentially, it's cooler at the surface and it's warmer aloft. And, well, no, no, uh, it's, it cools aloft, uh, but I mean, it's in reverse. It's warmer at the surface and it, it's colder aloft. And that helps it the warm air rise. Okay, so if it's colder, it'll rise even faster and stuff like that. If it's uh, warm above and cold below, well, the warmer the cold air is just going to stay because it always sinks. So anyway, that's kind of what this is measuring. So you got you got some of it here. There's your instability, your fuel that kind of tracks off uh, on Tuesday. But you want about 750 plus, and it's very very close to that. It, most of this area is going to be about 500 to 1,000, so it's very marginal. Um, but I think there's going to be just enough for some uh, severe weather. That wind shear can kind of make up for it because we have so much of that wind shear. It might actually make up for it. Another thing we can look at is the lifted index. This is another kind of uh, measurement. You know, if instability's in question or the capes in question, you can kind of look at this. There's some lift right there. Really, overall, uh, not a lot, but it's definitely indicating that there'll be some. And really, with, all you need is a little bit with this kind of wind shear that we got going. Supercell composite. This uh, shows the chances for supercells. This really enhances the... Uh, when you have supercell storm modes, this really enhances the hail and uh, tornado threat. And it's kind of meandering around a one or a two there, which, again, is uh, maybe sufficient. We'll see what happens. But... Uh, We'll look at the um, precipitation here. We'll look at the uh, storm system that's going to track across the southern uh, United States and Ohio Valley here. We're going to set this into animation mode. And I'm going to show you this kind of thing in motion. While that loads, I'm going to well look at this here. This is the uh, moisture. we got plenty of moisture to deal with here, too. Your cold fronts, this is going to be uh, Monday night. All of these maps have been Monday night. Your cold fronts right here. You can kind of see it right here. Now, there's some convergence out ahead of it. We might actually, well, it'd be interesting to see if we can get some uh, severe weather out ahead of it. If you get severe weather out ahead of that cold front, that greatly enhances the tornado potential. When you get storms along the cold front, the tornado potential, the cold front kind of undercuts the updrafts. There's a little bit too much cold there, and it just doesn't really work out. But the cold front's really not that terribly strong so i still think you're going to have some uh, a good tornado threat along the front but we can get some storms out ahead of it man that'll uh, increase the threat even more so that's uh very interesting to see there 
some uh, convergence uh, zones out ahead of it like that on Monday night. Tuesday, it's not going to be as big of a deal. This is a later Tuesday, early Tuesday morning, Monday night. Here's your low-pressure system out in the Ohio Valley. Your front is going to be right here-ish, your cold front, maybe a little bit out ahead of it. Um, but when you get that veering, the southwest winds like that, and well, you know, with the western jet, we might actually have enough directional shear for tornadoes as well over the night on uh, Monday. You want your winds to kind of spin uh, with height. Yeah, you might get enough of that. But uh, this cold front right here in general is going to be really start to strengthen and, and really start to speed up. And when it does, the tornado threat's going to go down. So I think the tornado threat's going to be lower, um, you know, as you get towards the Carolinas. But the wind threat will increase. So I think you're going to have a stronger wind threat out there on Tuesday. But overall, I think the tornado threat begins to diminish a little bit after Monday night, um, after this frame right here, so on, you know, around 6 a.m. But there could be some nighttime tornadoes out in uh, Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, and uh, earlier in the day on Texas. Um, so look at the uh, precipitation now. This is just going to look at the storm system. I'm going to play it throughout the week here um, to, to recap this up here. And this is uh, quite interesting. It's a very powerful storm system we're looking at. Now, these models load really slow. I've actually been thinking about creating my own models. We've actually been in the works to make these really presentation-friendly, to make them work with these videos. And I'll also be unveiling them for you guys to use along with me. So we're going to have some pristine graphics, pristine user experience, because I don't think any of that exists out there right now, to be honest with you except pivotal weather is pretty good um, and tropical tidbits as well but they're they're all really hard to use for these videos um, so we'll go uh, fast forward onto uh, the day on Tuesday or a Monday here here's our storm system right here and uh, again if you if you want these models if you want me to make these models comment in the chat and uh, I'll see how much interest there is uh, they require a lot of uh, time and money to develop, and I'm actually already starting them a, a little bit. But these, you know, when I say this, it, it still probably would be like a year or two from now. It wouldn't be like, you know, next week or anything. They they require a lot of time to develop these things, and uh, so here's your. Uh, this is uh, going to be Sunday right here. Your system's starting to develop. That little first little system kind of moves through, and then we have another one that comes out on. Uh, on uh, Tuesday, uh, Monday. This is Sunday right here. Then our main one develops Monday. See it right there, right there. Uh, go back again, and uh, it, right there. So here's your low pressure system right here. Your cold front's kind of out here. Warm front's probably out here in this area right here. Your severe weather threat's going to be kind of in this area in the warm sector right there. So we'll erase that, and then we'll fast forward it. Yeah, you know, see again, this is this is why I, I these are hard to handle here. We'll fast forward it just right into Monday night, and you can see those storms just blow up over the uh, Tennessee area into the uh, Ohio Valley, maybe Midwest region too. And your powerful cold front is right here. It's really starting to strengthen. Your warm front's out here. Low pressure systems right here. Again, if you can get storms out ahead of that front, that's really going to greatly increase the tornado potential. Uh, probably a lot of heavy rain too, and uh, probably a big squall line with uh, severe weather. We'll go into the day on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon here, around 1 p.m. It tracks out into the uh, Midwest, Ohio Valley region, even starting to get out to the northeast. And uh, this is going to be Monday night at 7 p.m., Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Here's your uh, low pressure system. Your cold front is going to be right here. The tornado threat greatly decreases, but could be a nice squall line along the cold front. Lots of heavy rain. Again, if this was winter, here's your 540 line right here. A little uh, far to the west, but man, it'd be a blizzard. It'd be a nice little snowstorm for the Midwest if that was earlier in the month. But look at this right here. 
lots of cold air. That's a good indication of very cold air getting dragged out behind it. And uh, so that's going to sweep into the Midwest as we go into the future here. I'll fast forward it. This is Wednesday now. It's going to be Wednesday right here. And actually, look at that thing right there. Got some snowstorm. Now, that I, I'm not sure about that yet. We'll have to keep an eye on that, maybe make a video. But GFS likes to be weird this far out sometimes. We'll keep an eye on that. Actually, show some snow for uh, Wednesday across the plains. And that tracks out in the Ohio Valley. But, yeah, remember that thing I was talking about, that big surge late in the week next week? Very cold air, very windy, cold air behind this thing. Probably 20s for highs for much of the central northern U.S., 30s and 20s. And uh, this is going to be uh, Friday. Look at that. Some snow maybe in for the northeast and Canada. Really windy on the back side of that thing. And this cold air actually extends out to the eastern seaboard. The west is also seeing a lot of cold air as well. Another wave that tracks out snow for the mountains. And uh, look at that. By the end of the run, nice powerful storm system all the way down to Texas. There's another big storm system across the central U.S. So very uh, active for uh, really, like I said, with that uh, map I made last week, kind of this area out into this area right here. And you're seeing just that, especially this region right here. So it's really evolving according to plan. Now, one more thing we're going to look at before we wrap this up is the tornado threat in the uh, with a sounding. So I'll show you what that is in a second here. I'm going to just kind of click out ahead of this. And it's going to bring up a sounding. This is a 3D implementation of the atmosphere. And uh, we'll look at the tornado threat here. And uh, this is actually showing tornado threat. This is our hazard type right here. It's actually showing tornadoes. See this uh, white line right here? This white line right here, the red line right here, anything in between of that is going to be your instability. It's very thin. You actually kind of want them to be a little more thick and up like that. That would be more extreme instability. So the instability is pretty thin. The wind shear is great, though. You're going to have a very powerful low-level jet sweep in late in the night, Monday night. That's going to enhance the tornado threat. Your wind shear, you know, you got 10 knots at surface, then you got like 50, 70, 80 knots above there. That's really going to help those updrafts. There's a little bit of turning as well. This looks good for tornadoes. So I think you're going to see some tornadoes in that region. Uh, but that's... You know, I'm going to make a tutorial in the future of how to use these things. But, yeah, that's just a little uh, little extra wrinkle in there for uh, for the uh, weather enthusiasts. So that's going to be uh, kind of wrapping it up here for the uh, uh, State of the Weather Address Severe Weather Edition here. Now, if you like these videos, go ahead and uh, check out our uh, channel and subscribe. Or subscribe below this video. We got weekly videos on Mondays, Wednesdays. And uh, Fridays, Mondays, we do the state of the weather dress. At least we are in the future. Right now, it's been kind of busy. But Wednesdays, Weather Decoded TV, those are weather forecasting tutorials. Fridays, we've got surprise videos as well, like storm chases and stuff like that. So go ahead and click like if you like this video. Comment below where you're from and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at uh, Weather Decoded. I mean, starting to use that a little bit more. I just kind of opened it up for fun. But, uh, well, follow me on there. So if you like today's video, go ahead and subscribe. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon.